At the turn of the 20th century, with the adoption of new transportation and manufacturing techniques, the retail industry began to grow. In 1927, with financing through Middle West Utilities in Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas, the Southland Ice Company was formed by the merger of local ice factories and retail ice distribution locations. Upon the demand of customers, Southland retail docks began to carry simple staple foods to accommodate an all-in-one shopping need. As more Southland locations began carrying these staple goods, the areas that adopted the one-stop shopping features became known as totem stores, branded by large totem poles in front of the location while playing upon the idea that customers would show up and tote away the items they purchased. Southland and their totem stores began to further innovate their convenience retail locations through the offering of gasoline in some areas while expanding their product offerings. Totem even revolutionized the paper milk carton. The convenience store concept thrived under the Great Depression, but the financial situation of Southland's backer, Middle West Utilities, sent Southland into bankruptcy. With the new challenges facing the growing retail chain, the end of prohibition allowed for totem locations to begin carrying beer along with their flagship product, ice. This allowed Totem to appeal to a wider customer base and helped pull the reorganized firm out of its financial doldrums. The 1940s led to more expansion of Totem stores until 1946 when the Totem name was abandoned for the new and more recognizable 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven referred to the retail location's original hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. In the 1950s, 7-Eleven finally grew beyond the Dallas market into other regions of Texas, as well as into Florida and Washington, D.C. As the decade progressed, expansion was accomplished through the absorption of competitors and through continued national expansion following the successes of the satellite locations situated beyond its Texas birthplace. As the 1960s began, the original president, Joe Thompson, who presided over the reorganization during Southland's financial troubles of the 1930s, passed away, leaving his son, John Thompson, in charge of the growing firm. While Joe was more cautious and apprehensive, being a leader during troubled times, John dreamed of further expansion. Soon, John rapidly grew the 7-Eleven brand. In a three-year period, thanks in part to John's aggressive strategy, and the growing number of suburban developments throughout the United States, the number of convenient quick stop retail locations tripled to 4,000 stores. By purchasing approximately 130 Speedy Mart stores from the California market, 7-Eleven not only grabbed a larger market share, but they too acquired a franchising system that they had never before undertaken. With the knowledge gained through the Speedy Mart acquisition, Soon, franchises would comprise a large percentage of all 7-Elevens in the United States. Along with the diversified product offerings over the years, 7-Eleven continued to experiment with new products and new innovations. Along with offering money orders, television tube testing services, and floor polishers, in the 1960s, 7-Eleven expanded into offering fast foods for eating on the go as well as the most recognizable product that even today is the flagship of their almost 4,000 individual product offerings. This would be the Slurpee. 7-Eleven even grew its hours of operation beyond its namesake and in many locations became a 24-hour retail destination. Some 7-Eleven locations even tested drive-up curbside service. From its origination in the 1920s to the heavy U.S. market penetration into the 1980s, Southland and 7-Eleven had been an innovative and incredibly recognizable brand in their industry sector. Soon, that brand and that company would be in the hands of a Japanese firm. With a good cup of fresh brewed hot coffee to perk up your morning. 7-Eleven coffee brings out the best, <laughs> not the beast in you. Hey, Ralph! Without hesitation, the brand that is conjured up when thinking about the convenience store industry is without a doubt 
7-Eleven. Since 1946, 7-Eleven has been an expanding firm that not only originated the convenience store concept, but also innovated this sector throughout the 20th century. From its inception, 7-Eleven has grown to over 6,000 stores in the United States and over 23,000 worldwide. This presentation will observe 7-Eleven in the United States and Japan. We will first review the history of 7-Eleven in these two locations and then apply the development diamond to analyze the market's conditions and characteristics that created the groundwork for 7-Eleven's successes and failures in each economy. By reviewing the timeframes and incorporation of general purpose technologies while analyzing the political, financial, entrepreneurial, and managerial attributes of these two societies, we can identify the factors that contributed to 7-Eleven's accomplishments.